Hello there. Maleficent is filling in for Queen Bee Melissa, whoever she may be. And I'm going to be telling a little story from my Disney Spooky Tales book. It has a very good title. It's called Maleficent Returns. And I'm sure you will be very pleased with the ending. One morning, Princess Aurora and her fairy godmothers prepared the palace for a party. It was Aurora and Philip's anniversary, and Aurora couldn't wait to celebrate with the kingdom. Personally, I could have waited. Oh, it looks wonderful, she told the fairies. Oh, but Flora said, we've still got to make everything pink. Ugh. No, 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 said Meriwether, make it blue. That's a little better. Aurora laughed. Whatever you say, my dear, she said. Suddenly, a shadow darkened the palace. Meriwether exclaimed, it's a solar eclipse. Like they know anything about that? <laughs> so it is, said Flora. During solar eclipses, magic works in the most mysterious of ways. And sometimes even scary ways, said Meriwether. Meriwether's pretty sharp. Oh, I wouldn't worry, Fauna replied. With Maleficent gone, we have nothing to fear. Sure. At that very moment, the darkness from the eclipse fell over Maleficent's castle. A green light erupted from the windows. The stone raven perched on the balcony came to life. My little pet. Caw, caw, it screeched, flying inside to search for its mistress. Before long, the raven saw the source of the green light. Maleficent's staff was glowing. The raven pecked the glass ball with its beak until the ball cracked. Suddenly, green smoke emerged twisting and turning until it became Maleficent. So there's my little pet. So glad he was there. Come, my pet, she said to the bird. Let us see who's here to welcome our return. They better be ready. Maleficent searched her rooms and found them to be dark and empty. It seems like you are my only faithful servant. She used her magic staff to check on the rest of the kingdom and saw that everyone was gathered at the palace, you know, for that party. Maleficent's eyes flashed with anger. It seems we have much to do here. In the palace, the party was in full swing and Aurora and Philip exchanged their gifts. Oh my goodness, said Aurora as a small puppy jumped into her arms. Gross, he's adorable. Darling, I love it, said Philip as Aurora handed him a gleaming golden pendant with their portraits inside. Everyone cheered, ready to begin the feast and an evening of dancing. What an evening, I don't know. I better ruin this party, huh? Suddenly a loud screech interrupted the laughter and music. <laughs> I see I was not invited to yet another celebration. Maleficent said coolly, well, sort of coolly. Well, this will be the last. She raised her staff. Fire and ice, moon and sun, turned skin and bone into cold, hard stone. The green mist surrounded Philip, the fairies, and the guests. They instantly turned into statues, even the new little puppy. Without the company of your loved ones, you will wither like a wilted rose, said Maleficent, leaving the palace in one swift turn. She swished her cape. Don't I look mad? a bit taller too there. Tears fell from Aurora's face as she looked at Philip and the fairies. She didn't know what to do. She should have had magical training. At that moment, her animal friends rushed from the forest into the room. Don't they have fences around the palace? They'd been too late to the anniversary party and had seen everything from the window. Tch, nosy. They tried to comfort Aurora, but I can't stay here, she said. I must go to Maleficent and break the spell. Yeah, do you think I'm gonna greet her? Though her animal friends tried to stop her, she ran out of the palace. As she got closer to Maleficent's castle, black clouds formed in the sky. But Aurora kept running, determined to save her kingdom. I think it's gonna be too little too late. Lonely already, my dear? Maleficent cackled when the princess approached. I don't cackle, do I? Maleficent, said Aurora, I demand you to lift the curse on my people. Well, I couldn't, even if I wanted to help you. 
A spell like that cannot be reversed. But what if you turn me to stone instead, said Aurora. You would do that? Spend eternity as a statue while your friends and family could live? I would, said Aurora bravely, but you must swear that they will awaken. I believe that can be arranged, said Maleficent, towering over the princess and lifting her staff into the air. Aurora closed her eyes, bracing herself for the curse. But as soon as Maleficent uttered the words, there was a flash of light and a scream. Aurora watched in shock as the evil fairy changed into her dragon form. Cool, right? But what disappeared? Wait a minute, this is not the story I remember. I don't know. Back at the palace, it says Prince Philip and the others awoke. You mean I kept my promise? Worried that Maleficent had taken Aurora, Philip rushed out of the castle. Wait for us, the three fairies cried. Suddenly a familiar figure came running toward them. Aurora, Philip cried, are you all right? What happened? Aurora explained everything. Flora smiled at her. Your selflessness reversed Maleficent's spell and rid the world of her once again. Remember, love is the strongest kind of magic. She said that with a straight face. Oh my goodness. The group headed back to the palace. Soon everyone knew how Maleficent had been defeated, but don't you believe it. They resumed the party and continued the festivities late into the night, celebrating their courageous and noble leaders and their love for one another. Well, I personally hope they get stomach aches from that. So I think someone switched my book. I do not know who did that, but I am not very happy with that ending. So I will just disappear. Hello all, Harry Potter here, and I'm here to read you a story. Seems I've forgotten it. It'll come here. There it is. I'm going to be reading 10 Creepy Monsters. Ten creepy monsters met neath a gnarled pine. One blew away, and then there were nine. Nine creepy monsters trudged with lurching gait. One lost his foot, and then there were eight. Eight creepy monsters gazed up at heaven. One stopped to howl, and then there were seven. Seven creepy monsters gathered up sticks. One lit a match. <gasps> And then there were six. Six creepy monsters donned suits for a dive. One found his love. And then there were five. Five creepy monsters crept through an old door. One snagged his wreck. And then there were four. Four creepy monsters were dancing with glee. One stomped too hard. And then there were three. Three creepy monsters stirred steaming swamp boo. One spilled a bit. And then there were two. Two creepy monsters were still having fun. One saw the sun rise. And then there was one. One creepy monster rushed home at a run. He pulled up his blanket. And then there were none. The end. I hope you enjoyed that story, and now it's time for me to disappear. Hi! So, speaking of creepy monsters running away, or creepy things running away, I actually have a finger play I want to share with you. And this one is about five little bats. So, show me your five little bats. And here we go. Five little bats flew out one night over the hill and far away. Mother bat said, eek, 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 eek. But she didn't know they said that, huh? But only four little bats came back. So we lost a bat, oh no, here we go. Four little bats flew out one night over the hill and far away. Mother bat said, eek, 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 eek. Any tune you 
lot, doesn't matter. But only, how many? Oh, we lost another one. Three, three little bats flew out one night over the hill and far away. Mother bat said, eek, 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 but only two. Oh no, go a little bit faster. Two little bats flew out one night over the hill and far away. Mother bat said, eek, 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 but only one, only one. One little bat flew out one night over the hill and far away. Mother bat said, eek, 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 eek. But this time no little bats came back. So sad mother bat flew out one night over the hill and far away. Sad mother bat said, good job. And all of the five little bats came back. Yay! That was a happy ending. Good thing Maleficent wasn't here. She hates happy endings. All right, so this one is my favorite Halloween story I want to share with you. This one is called Los Gatos Black on Halloween. This is written by Marisa Montes, and it is illustrated by Yuyi Morales. I like it a lot. Um, Harry Potter read you a 10 creepy monster story, and you're probably gonna see some creepy monsters in this story as well. Los Gatos Black. Here we go. Los Gatos Black with eyes of green. Cats slink and creep on Halloween with ojos keen that squint and gleam. They yell, they hiss. They sometimes scream. So what are gatos? Cats, good. Ooh, las calabazas, fat and round. Carved pumpkins guard a hollowed ground. Their eerie faces burning bright form spooky beacons in the night. What are calabazas? Look at the picture. Pumpkins, that's right. And do you know what we call a pumpkin when you carve a face in it? It has a special name, do you know? Jack-o-lantern, like that. Ooh, las brujas guide their broomsticks high. The witches on escobas fly. Above the earth, before the moon, they swoop and swish and swoosh and soon. I left my escoba at home today. I should have brought it with me though. Los esqueletos rattle bones. The skeletons with creaks and groans delight the night in moonbeams dance. An awkward bow, a clattering prance. Look at that. Could you imagine what it would sound like to hear skeletons walking? All of those bones clinking together? That's kind of creepy, huh? <gasps> Next, los fantasmas drag their chains. The ghosts, the phantoms, shriek their pains. Now come the ghouls, then zombies march beneath the trees where branches arch. My goodness, lots of scary Halloween characters. Mm, I bet you know what this one is too. October's luna, full and bright. The fall moon lights a vampire's bite. La momia walks, the mummy stalks, and far away, a lone loon mocks. And if you look carefully at the mirror, you can see the vampire has no reflection. You can see his comb, you can see the ring on his finger, but you don't see his face. Oh my goodness. At medianoche, midnight strikes. The witching hour the werewolf likes. The bloodhounds bay, the dogs howl. 
beware, the wolf man's on the prowl. Ooh, at midnight. I sometimes call that the witching hour. What am I dressed like today? That's my favorite time. The grave sites shiver, headstones shake, las tumbas open, tombs awake. The corpses with their cold, dead eyes, los muertos from their coffins rise. Oh my goodness, they're waking up. And in a slow and strange parade, the creatures of the night invade a haunted casa long asleep, the mansion secrets buried deep. So all these characters are heading to what? What's a casa? A house. Yes, by the magic of this night, this noche filled with chills and fright, the monsters crowd the haunted hall. Los monstruos throw a monstrous ball. Really? They're playing soccer? No. What kind of ball are we talking about here? Maybe a ball like when Cinderella went to the ball? Yeah, like a big party with dancing. Ooh, on harpsichords, once tucked away, some unseen dedos, fingers play. Forgotten music, tinkling clear, la musica, the dead can hear. Oh my goodness, that looks like that might be Beethoven or Mozart, who knows? One of those famous composers. Ooh, las brujas, boogie, muertos, ba, los esqueletos, to the hop. The ghosts in their transparent waltz glide through the wolfman's somersaults. So he's doing flips in the air and the ghosts are gliding through him. <gasps> knock, knock, knock. <gasps> and from the door come tres loud raps. How many is tres? Three. What could it be? Is it perhaps? The music stops. Each creature gasps. La puerta creaks, it opens wide. The things are coming, run and hide. They hold up bags, yell, trick or treat. Los monstruos beat a quick retreat. <gasps> Who was at the door? Children, children are coming. <gasps> the thing that monsters most abhor that means really, really hate. Our human niños at the door. Of all the horrors they have seen, the worst are kids on Halloween. <gasps> so all these big scary monsters, what are they afraid of? You! Isn't that silly? All these big scary monsters are afraid of children. That's so silly. And you might have noticed in this book that you heard a lot of words in Spanish. So at the back of this book, there's a glossary of all the Spanish words and what they mean in English. So if you wanted to, you could check out Los Gatos Black on Halloween and learn a little bit of Spanish words too. Thanks you guys for joining us for this great story time. I hope you enjoyed my friend Maleficent and my friend Harry Potter's stories. I hope you enjoyed my story as well. And we'll see you again for another fun story time. Have a great Halloween, be safe, take care.